there is the underdog story. When the desk and day started all the way back today, some people were talking, I'm saying chronically here, were talking about how Detonation Focus Me was his dark horse to come up and upset some. Now, I'm not too sure just yet if that's what we're looking at. I'm way more buying into the narrative you just presented me with that they might be second place. But, you know, it starts one place, and this championship, like, it's a very bloody good start way to start. Uh, one of these teams will be hoping it starts with success. Rise band away from Aria immediately. There's the Camille taken away by DFM as well. Well, no real surprises. I am wondering if we'll see one of these teams' pocket picks. Cassadin, a very big pick for No Man's. Alongside that, Steel loves his Shaco. I mean, yeah, it, it's not that big just yet. It's very situational at times into specific matchups. But honestly, Matic, you're completely right. It is the Cassadin coming out here. Now, going off the bands, we're already seeing on a few Unicorns of Love, uh, Arius Rise was a pivotal champion in their regular season, getting that mid lane priority, moving it up to topside. Rise was one of these champions we saw it quite often with. And then obviously Steel and it's Sin Sao also been removed away. And then a Mumu keeps showing off today, getting banned here as well. Doesn't really surprise me that Unicorns of Love want to get rid of the Amumu with Gang and the amount he can roam and the ability he has on engaged supports. Removing that from the pool, removing that option of, you know, the Curse of the Sad Bullet Time or even just the Curse of the Sad Mummy combined with any follow-up AoE makes a lot of sense. Because that's another thing as well, because there's the priority champions we've already seen today, like the Lucian, like the Aurelia now getting moved away. But Lee Sin has also had 100% presence going into this one, being banned and only let through in the game we saw before with the Lee coming through so this priority from unicorns of love is going to be interesting to see where they put it it is ananasic's most played across summer as well and immediately locked in he played five games of it he won four of those fives of course a lot of these teams won a lot of their games in their home regions that's kind of why they're here in planes but still a very a comfortable champion for the Unicorns of Love jungle. But that's the interesting thing about planes, because all these teams are good in their own right from their own region, but now they get to put their pride on the line when they finally clash against each other. They definitely do. These two teams never clashed before, although they are two of our most storied planes teams here at Worlds 2021. Unicorns of Love in their third successive World Championships, DFM in their seventh ever international tournament. And now we see, once again, red side misfortune. We've seen it every game. Definitely. Misfortune, one of these champions with the patches coming in with the uh, reword of the Yumu's item change. So it's cheaper now. Builds out of Corfield's Warhammer instead. Easier to go off these long swords oh, instead of the it. pig yes. axes. And then LeBlanc coming in from Aria. This is a statement pick as well when you go into other mid laners. We've already seen Icon with it today. There we have, but Aria has played it four times in summer and he has not died. Wow. He has not died on this okay. pick in four games. They won every single one of them. Aria with an incredibly comfortable pick here in the mid lane. And Ryze was his most played champion above that. Of course, that's already banned away. Yeah, not so much going to that one. So it's going to be interesting to see what approach Unicorns of Love is going to have to this one. Do you want to go for a roaming style where you say, I don't care about this LeBlanc, we'll try and do something else on the side lanes instead? Or are you putting all the eggs into the basket that is No Man's, giving a comfort champion into LeBlanc instead, and then just play for him? You already have Lee Sin, which is a great skirmishing champion in the early game. So I think from Unicorns of Love, you can be set up quite nicely, but they avoid it and they much rather secure the Rakan, which is a contested pick between these two supports as well. Yeah, Santos has six games on Rakan, Galio, and Nautilus, so very used to playing the poultry man in the bottom lane. Into that, it looks like Gang is going to look towards his Leona. That's his most played across the course of summer, and I do love that AoE combination. Yes. Curse of the sad solar flare <laughs> from the DFM bottom lane. There's no curse in either oh, of these true. champions' name. You it's can't just time. put curse in it's, there. I guess it's, it's solar time? Bullet just, flare. Just stop. Bullet no. flare. You know you like it. Ah, we'll see later. But it's also just a good pick into the Rakan as well. Rakan, one of these champions, this super immobile. That's why you often see it picked into the Thresh or into Braum because they have a hard time dealing with this mobility. So now when you have the Leona coming into it, if you shot him down with the CC chain and you blow him up immediately, will which will with the uh, LeBlanc, you will have the chance to do so. That's what you're looking to do in the mid game at least. Moving into the next stage of pick ban here, junglers and top laners. Oh, sorry, jungler for DFM alongside their top laner, Unicorns of Love. I'm wondering if this Lucian is going to get flexed towards the mid lane. It is a possibility for No Man's. He is the only person on this team that has played it in summer, but of course Lucian kind of rose into a priority more after the end of summer season. Gwen banned, set banned. 
two top laners are removed as the Silas taken away as well. Yeah, so you can definitely see that top lane right now is the focus of the game. Right now on Detonation Focus Me, you have the luxury of knowing that it's a Lee Sin, so you're just going to fourth pick your jungler, and then you're going to get Epi, that counter pick. So Unicorns of Love's thought process right now should just be, what champion don't we want to play against? Because we will have to blind pick our top laner, so right now you're thinking of a specific top laner and trying to take away some of those uh, counters. So definitely champions with dash is something that they take into consideration because Poppy has been removed that can obviously stop that. Yeah, I mean, into at least Sin, Rakan, and Illusion. It kind of makes sense that you don't yeah. want to be playing against a Poppy. DFM here, perhaps looking towards their jungle. Talon is something that we've heard rumor of from Solo Q, but have yet to see picked here at Worlds 2021. And there we are. Okay, DFM with the burstiest of burst comps I have ever seen ever. Like, how much damage does this composition have? To be fair, there are quite squishy members of Unicorns of Love right now. You don't have that tank. If, if at best, Lee Sin, obviously, a Bruiser. So, that CC chain we talk about, if you hit it with Leona and the rest of the members just pile down, you got two assassins already. It should be fairly easy finding out what you want to do. Now, blind pick for Unicorns of Love. It is going to be boss with that Jace. Could obviously still be flexed into the mid lane, but I am expecting to TC it up topside. It would make a lot of sense. The Unicorn's perhaps looking towards a tank or pseudo tank in the mid lane. Lissandra, of course, with her frozen tomb can mitigate a lot of damage that comes out from the opposition. Shields from Oriana can do the same, but not really to the same degree. The shield, of course, has a travel time because the ball has to get to your teammate and you might just die before you even get there against a LeBlanc, a Talon and an MF. Definitely. And you know what? I think it's a very historic roster. You kind of already see here. We already talked about the top side of Unicorns of Love and you get historic picks as well. Oriana obviously always sees plays at the World Championship. Same can almost be set from the Lee Sin and Jace obviously ever since we found that top lane dominance with the Asian teams coming in have seen their priority up here. The last pick for Detonation focused me into that one. It is going to be this Nah, which honestly has been a great pick for Ebi in the past as well, to the point where they would just blind pick this champion as a first or second rotation just because they know how reliable Ebi is. But with these compositions, I'm kind of imagining them trying to play for this talent instead. We know how fast that talent clear can be, having full cleared their camps at 3.15 almost, uh, to the point where you can really just start parkouring around the map and trying to find whichever lane you really want to play for. There is a few. You have the Leona, you have the LeBlanc, and there, of course, is the Mecha now when you hit level 6 on Airby. Where will Steel decide to spend his time in the early game? So often a key focus for Detonation Focus Me, so often a key player in their leads in how they get ahead in the early game. Him alongside Aria is a jungle mid duo to be feared. However, on the other side of the map, you've got no mans. You have a sick Like these guys, they have the experience. They have the pedigree of being on the world stage and they team up so well together. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this mid jungle clash in the early game. Definitely, because I also look at Ananasic and I'm, I'm, he's, he's a jungler where he's got a lot of jungle proximity. He's not really playing for himself. He's very selfish, actually. And one of his biggest strengths is finding these picks towards no man's. But having that Orianna into the blank in the mid lane, there's not a lot of pick potential before you really hit that level six. So that early game setup, I'm going to be curious about Unicorns of Love of where they want to find it pre level six, if they, if they want to find it even at all. Because that is how Unicorns of Love traditionally played in the summer season. They were all about getting No Man's ahead, getting him towards a position where he could just dominate his lane and then output the DPS in later game fights. But it does feel a little bit more tricky to do that when he's on something like the Oriana. Now, I do want to see if Detonation Focus Me does have some level one plays because in their regionals, or just in terms of playoffs as well, they always had something to pull out in the early game, starting Bobble on Zoe, starting E on Silas to get the stun. So it wouldn't even surprise me if we tried and see them go for something here before laning phase really starts. It looks like they were perhaps expecting Unicorns of Love to step into this tri-bush. You can see Abby just waiting there, the rest of the team across the wall. But for the moment, no one will face off. There was a ward placed around the red buff by DFM, meaning that they would spot out if Ananasik decided to go for an invade. And with lanes just going back to normal, from the side of Unicorns of Love, there's not really much early intel 
being gathered here. Uh, we usually would see them try to get either a deep ward down in the bottom lane to see when they finally hit that lane or try to get some intel on the enemy jungler. I think that's really pivotal when you play against the Talon as well. But they've not gone for anything. They're pro uh, probably waiting with their trinkets here for this stage of the game where when Ty Talon is finally going to be around, you can try and spot him at the Raptors. You can try and get that deep ward towards the river if you get the priority instead. And keeping eyes on Steel will be a key factor for Unicorns in this early game. They really need to keep him under wraps, make sure that he can't get snowballing on this talent, because we've seen, whether in solo queue or while watching tracking the blows, just how much damage a talent can do as he gets towards that level six. That Shadow Assault can do so much work. For the moment, though, Every matchup as expected. Oriana into LeBlanc in the mid lane here. Both uh, mid lanes just trying to trade with each other. While Utapon on this MF that has been prioritized very heavily on the first day of Worlds, trying to trade into Argonaut. And the thing is with Lucian, we were seeing a lot of Lucian Nami, and that was kind of the discussion. You expected Lucian Nami oh to my be God. a huge pick, but you can see perhaps it doesn't work quite as well when you're eating double ups in your face. Rakan does a lot of what Nami does and actually is stronger outside of lane than Nami is. Yeah, exactly. And you know, even playing with this lane, you don't mind being shoved in in the bot side. You take a look at the summoner spells, Argonaut has been forced to take this cleanse because you are against the Leona and that gives you the leverage to just take heal on the Misfortune. So if a fight were to break out, if we see it down in this bottom lane, having that heal is actually going to benefit you. And that may be why as Lucian that you don't want to take these early trades that you'd usually see a Lucian go for. Yeah, the dash in double auto attack with the Light Slinger alongside the Nami can do a lot of work, but Vakan not the strongest laner in that respect. Both junglers on the top side of the map right now as Steel is going to get his red buff and Anasik takes away his blue. Actually skipped the Wolves, so would have had a slightly quicker timer to get up towards the top lane if he wanted, but has decided against it for the moment. Yeah, but you also see the full clear coming in from the Talon now. It's 310. He's already on his croc. Should be finished in a bit. Gang going in in the bottom lane, Argonaut. Able to walk away for the moment. No summoners burnt on either side, but you can see Argonaut taking quite a battering. Has already worked his way through two of his health potions. Does have a total biscuit and a extra pot in his pocket, though. But this can be a bit unfortunate for Steel because no man's half the priority in mid lane right now. Super easy for Anasic, Anasic to take the scuttle off towards top. But Unicorns of Love bot lane, they also have the priority. And because of this, there's not really much you can do as the Tenacious Focus Me to stop these early scuttles from coming through. But there's no ward up here, and Jace is quite far up the lane. Uh, boss pushed, pushed up quite a bit here. Epi going in as well, is about to turn Mega. Will have the flash wallop in just a second. Parkour across the wall, flash in, looking for Boss. He still has the flash to try and get away, but the wallop will connect, stunned up, and DFM get first blood. Super nice stun by DFM. I love the patient that came in from Epi as well. He was waiting with that stun until the flash came out from Boss, and when he finally come out, he was already caught in his trap card, and he just got the knockdown. And then you can see Ebby and Steel will push out this wave, meaning that Boss has to TP back in. Otherwise, he would be losing too many minions to this tower. Ebby might even stay around and set the sides against it. He'll go back and spend that assist gold. Meanwhile, though, Anana sick with a good invade, knowing that the enemy jungle is on the top side of the map can push himself in. Yeah, but there's not really much of a die threat coming into this one. It is still Leona. Heal is up and available. He can shadow them if he wants to, but there is also a ward stopping that. But it gave him a bit of a jungle advantage in the sense that he got both Scottles, he got the Grum, so when you get out on the reset, you do have a window to try and actually be proactive with your levels as soon as you does hit that level 6, because that's going to be something to play for if you have the advantage against Steel. Of course, Ananasik will be trying to shut down any more of those ganks from Steel. Steel so consistently a carry for DFM in the LJL. High kills and assists at the 15-minute mark. Lots of kill participation as well. He's very much involved in everything his team does. Yeah, if you've watched any of the LJL games, you would know that this man is so pivotal at getting his lanes ahead. The fact that he skipped camps if there's a winning matchup, he knows he can abuse. And that's also the reason why his kill participation is as high as it is, because he loves to play for the lane once they have a lead. It definitely does. 600 gold lead now for Detonation Focus Me. 300 of that sitting in the jungle. A couple of hundred for Arya in the mid lane as well, but it looks like No Man's is actually catching a wave, so should be able to equalize that just a little bit. Yeah, but you can already see Unicorns of Love now. They're showing their strength. They have that bot lane priority. They can move Santos out on the map, and that is pivotal here because Boss is caught in a position where his lane is not really in a favorable uh, state for him. If he's pushed up here and Steel is around, he can just get dope. Wow, that damage, and now the rest of Unicorns of Love, they're here as well. Steel's going to be just around the corner as Ebi is forced back. Remember, no flash on that Nar. Ananasic looking for it. Sonic Wave hits Steel. 
good little bit of bodyguarding there from the talent. But this is still great. You're forcing out a big wake from Ebi. He does have that teleport. Can threaten a little return kill here, though. And Anasik low after this little exchange. But the thing is, remember, Santa's still around in the river. And it's this pressure you get from the support play of Unicorns of Lofts that allows them to play like this. Ebi does TP back in towards that top lane, but only able to catch out half of that minion wave underneath the tower, so he's about 10 CS down. And as you said, it's Santa's roaming around that is allowing Unicorns of Love so much freedom. And of course, Hargonaut has to play a little bit of a backseat role here in the bottom side of the map. He's 15 CS down right now. You can see he's only got a pickaxe to the serrated Dirk already complete on Utapon. And Gang is spending just that little bit more time around Utapon to make sure that he can gain control of that matchup. The good thing for Argonaut here though was that his lane was pushed in towards the enemy tower, so the enemy minions started stacking up, which resulted in a slow push. But now, with the priority on detonation focus me, Gang is out on the map, but... Nomads does have flash, and I think this is going to be a hard gank to pull off. Yeah, the wave really not in the right spot for this sort of gank. It's actually continuing to push towards the Unicorns of Love tower. Aria will get it to crash in, perhaps just shadowing him. There's the chain still going in. Flash Zenith Blade there, looking for it. Nomads underneath the tower is dead before he can even shockwave. He found it and didn't even have to burn a flash from the side of Aria. Down in the bot lane, they tried to go for play with a stack minion wave towards Unicorns of Love instead, but we're not even done. Oh, uh, the war jump into the kick there, onto Ebi, will gnar them into the wall, but he doesn't have a flash. He doesn't really have a hope of getting away from this one. Boss switches forms, Ebi tries to jump, and Boss with the hyper here should just do enough damage. One more auto would be enough. The Sonic Wave short, there's the auto, as oh. Boss will take it. And movement speed almost came through with the hyper. Steel is trying to counter jungle because he saw the enemy jungle up here, so he will get some extra gold and experience from himself stealing away that red buff and i wonder if they can threaten a bot lane dive here no they can't because no one's he is around the area as well and it looks like we're just going back to normal jungle clear with steel resetting and anasik on the other side of the map getting the rift herald you can see both the junglers just so active in the early game it's what the teams relied on them to do in the regular season and in the summer and they continue to do it here on the world stage slight gold lead for dfm but that plate in the top lane really evens it out this rift herald as well we talk about how good it is to use these to get early plates sometimes even to take towers we'll see if unicorns of love can use it effectively because really usually you see a dragon trade for that they got that for free and that's the that, that's like the important part as well going into this one because now you can build up the strategy we've already seen from Unicorns of Love. If you can push in the bot side once again, get Santos out of the map, get the mid lane priority with Nomads, and then you move your pieces up to the top side. You already take a look at the plates. There's only three left on Evie's tower. So if you can deter a win conditions that we've seen at least historically in the split from Detonation Focus Me, which was the top side, then you're already on the good track to make it into the mid game because early game from both teams here, they are quite pivotal in them getting their wins. Yeah, both these teams really not put behind too much in their regular seasons either. And we'll see how well Unicorns of Love are able to use this Rift Held to their advantage. No Man's has been under a little bit of pain in the mid lane, only about four CS down, so not a monumental difference, but usually he is the guy that's ahead on this team. Looks like Steel was able to sneak in here, has the Shadow Assault, Arya jumping forward. The trespass over the wall, no man's able to dodge to the side of the chains. And Anasik coming in as well, but still should just be able to walk away from this one, has to flash the shockwave. Yeah, they're definitely respecting each other here as well, but you can see the supports moving up at the same time. Actually, Yudzapon moving as well, and now level 6 has been hit by both these bot laners. This is where the, what did you call the combo? Oh, what, the solar time? No, solar, the uh, bullet flare. Yeah, bullet flare, there okay, finally what that got, does get online, but now with an Anasik up towards the top side, does have the Rift Herald, and they can threaten a tower here, but they don't feel too sure about where the enemy jungle is right now. Remember, there's not a lot of wards in DFM's jungle. Looks like they're going to get another wave shoved in here with the cannon wave coming in. You can see Ebi has to respect. No Man's also working his way up from the mid lane. Not something we saw him do too much in... The, uh, the CIS, usually he was the one that everyone was focusing on. Everyone was getting into his lane to get him ahead here. He's the one sacrificing a little bit of his laning phase to make sure that his top lane, Jace, has the advantage. Yeah, and it's also super easy for them because they're not being punished right now. They can go on to this tier 2 turret across map. It's not coming through either because in the minimap, they had a lot of good vision towards um, the bottom lane as well at the same time, which meant that your Unicorns of Love bottom lane, they knew exactly when they needed to back off, when they can move forward. Now they saw Steel clear out the ward. Now they're backing off, but it's already too late. They already got two top lane towers. Huge gold swing there for the Unicorns of Love at the 11 minute mark. They are 1,200 gold ahead. 
second plate didn't even fall in the bottom lane. Of course, we do still have three minutes to smash those plates. But uh, for the moment, Unicorns of Love very much in advantage in this game. You can see first items complete, Gore Drinker and Eclipse for the Unicorns. And I wonder what they want to use this extra top lane priority that they have gained for themselves. If I saw correctly, seems like Ebby is sat a little bit of a freeze off in the top lane. And right now, Boss having this extra time to move around, he's going to see if he can make a difference elsewhere on the map. Now, moving around with his jungler, clearing vision. If you can clear a clear path down towards the bottom lane, well, then you can keep yourself engaged with your lead here, trying to punish your opponent as much as you can. And it looks like they're trying to threaten the mid lane at the moment. Aria jumps across the wall, and Anasik is just around the corner. But Aria, of course, with the distortion, can just jump back very easily on that LeBlanc. As you say, Boss doesn't really have much to do on the map apart from trying to team up with Ananasik and apply that pressure. They will do it in the mid lane. Steel is waiting in the wings, but that's one plate down. Of course, the hyper charge from the Jace can get those auto attacks off very quickly. So two tower plates in the mid lane fall and Unicorns of Love able to continue to extend this gold lead about a thousand well a thousand three hundred gold ahead right now yeah and this is where you take a look at the top side you can see the waves have finally started to get pushed in so boss he's like okay great i finally have something to do in lane again and he's gonna move up there all right goes in there's the chains lands on the santa second chains comes out that's two of them still looking for it as well the shockwave used solar flare doesn't really get the stun just a little bit of a slow from that so in the end, Unicorns of Love are able to retreat. Yeah, but Unicorns of Love, I mean, a lot of people came in favoring DFM to this game. And I think Unicorns of Love, they're kind of throwing away these ex expectations, at least for the early game here. They are the one who's proactive. They are the one who's super stable around these objectives, as we already saw. They got the Rift held. We see Santos move out and about on the map all the time. And it's what's getting them these the, these leads. So now, as boss, you can push in the top side again. You can force Airby to slow push back into you. And then you start moving the pieces around once again to take care of the mid lane, to take care of the bot lane instead with a man advantage. So the question then for DFM becomes, how do you reduce the bleeding? How do you stop this early Jace pressure from really taking over the game? Because we've already seen five plates and a tier two in the top lane, two plates in the mid lane and pressure on that bottom side of the map. Deep vision now there for the Unicorns of Love. You can see Ebby is freezing, trying to get as much golden experience back for himself. But now the rest of DFM have to respect they're a man down on the rest of the map. Yeah, uh, uh, luckily for them, there is still a TP. And while the wave is really close to your base, it's super easy to reset and pick a goal pick it up if he has set up a freeze but to answer your question a lot of pressure is on steel because it's quite um, easy to predict what unicorns of love wants to do if your top lane has been pushed in then you know Bob's boss is going to move up to the top side again he's going to try and push it in and that's where you want to catch him off guard so you want to have this line of vision with pink wards you can already see in the inventory of dfm loads of pink wards have already been picked up and where these pink wards are placed is going to be pivotal for steel's pathing in terms of actually finding leverage back into the game and what I love as well is the timings on things. You can see there's two minutes left on the Ocean Drake. The Rift Herald hasn't spawned yet either. So Ebi actually has a lot of time where the rest of his team doesn't have to push forward. Gang here taking a little bit of a bad route. Bullet time coming out as well. But Gang, that was just poor pathing from uh, the support for DFM. Oh, and it does more as well because now Ebi used his teleport. Now he can't just freeze without having any care of where boss is. And all of a sudden, Unicorns of Love once again, they find a proactive play and they are rewarded for it. So with Rift Herald, now being up and available well they should just be able to pick this one up for free without having to worry about a cross map because jace can just clear up these waves down in the bottom lane i say that he's almost there <laughs> Down to about half HP, should be able to walk away. The Eclipse helping him out with that little bit of a shield. Santa's going to get chased down here as well. Gore Drinker used by Steel for the slow, but of course Rakan, very mobile, very slippery, very difficult to keep hold of. 15 minutes into the game, it's a 2,000 gold lead for the Unicorns of Love, and you have to expect that will continue to extend because you now have a Rift Held. Mid lane tower was chunked out a little bit. This Held can break that tier one, and then you open up the map even more for yourself. Yeah, you also got good ways to extend your lead with Drake coming up in 40 seconds. You can either try and force your advantage around this with the second rift tile you have just picked up you can try and cross map instead which is also an option so when detonation focus me starts up this drake you just try to put your resources in mid lane instead to just try and clear out this turret which is already half hp so it should be quite easy and anasik is going to be just around here my expectation is though you'll wait 20 seconds, 30 seconds exactly. here. Set up the vision down towards the bottom side. Really, you want to clear out these wards that are just by the red pit. You can see a great control ward actually there from DFM. Aria has a TP. LeBlanc TP flanks are not the most powerful, but if you can get into a pocket of vision, you can burst someone pretty quickly. 
And speaking of these pockets of vision, you can already see it here with these red wards, despite Unicorns of Love being the team that's leading the charge. They don't have that, all that much vision, as you already talked about, Medic, and because of this, they can move around with their Slippery Assassins here. Loads of mobility and pretty much talent. And Loveline coming into this one, but how they find that pick, that's going to be the interesting part. Gang going in, Santa's locked up, and there's the chains and there's the kill. Gang will take out his fellow supporters. Ebi looks to get in as well. Has Flash, has the Narva, decides to back away. One kill enough for DFM for now. Had to be a bit careful there. Steel was threatening, jumping over the wall, but being level 11, Steel wasn't going to fancy his chances. And now, going back onto the Drake, they should still be able to take this. Gang going in, and Alistair's going to dodge away with the safeguard. Aria jumping across the wall as well. There's a shockwave lands onto Ebi and Gang, but Gang has to stop watching the bullet time coming out as well. Aria's going to try and put the damage down. Argonaut with a culling of his own will force them away. Dragon secured for DFM, though. Yeah, but that should all the way always go to the side of DFM. But I like the way that each ultimate, which is kind of from out there, Ebi, or Aria rather, Will be okay, 200 HP remaining. Mid lane tier one, the target here for the Unicorns, and they should be able to secure it with the Rift Herald charging in. There it goes. They might try and protect this Herald to get another charge in, but instead decide they do not want any more action right now, and they will back away. Gold lead now shrunk to only a 1,000. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit too difficult. Also, in terms of Unicorns of Love Jungle, they have the entire top side that they have to clear. Then you can go for the reset. There's also a minion wave being pushed in on top lane that Nomads now have to pick up instead. So Tempo with the reset here could favor Detonation Focus Me in a bit where they'll be able to try and threaten some of these outer turrets if they'd like to do that. But make no mistake, despite that little engage there, Detonation Focus Me, they'll have to fight more of that. And it came from Gang, who found the pig onto Santos, the Leona Rakan matchup that we already highlighted. Oh, we are looking for Nomads here. Nomads does still have the flash. The chains connect. Flash! Nomads should have just flashed that. That was greedy from the Unicorns of Love mid laner and DFM very willing to pounce. Continue to find these picks. Three kills now on Steel. He's 3-0-0 on this talent. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, super easy. But that's the tempo we also talked about. Def DFM got to be out on the map earlier. They had that pink ward, which allowed Aria to find the pig on Nomans. Now, Nomans will be re respawning in a bit, and it doesn't seem like they're going to get any more major objectives out of it. We are still in this phase where we're kind of just waiting for Baron to be on the map to start threatening this objective instead. So let's talk a little bit about how the game will develop from here then, because as you say, we have this lull state, you know, a minute and a half on the Baron, three minutes on the Dragon. DFM obviously will want to play around that at some point, but how do we feel these teams team compositions are going to interact when it gets towards the more 5v5 portion of the game. Well, it's definitely going to be around set up around these objectives just because you have that Rakan on one side, you have the Leona on the other, and specifically with Detonation Focus Me, if they're allowed to do this every time, just threatening on the side lane without a response here, that's going to be really dangerous from Unicorns of Love, but they're trying to cross map it instead. So while you can see DFM are putting their resources up towards the top side of the map, on the other half of the map, that's where you see Unicorns of Love trying to threaten their own lead with the Ace. And Ebi continues to be on the weak side of the map here for DFM. Really hasn't had a hope in hell of surviving a lot of this game, or at least getting an advantage. No man's here caught with the Zenith Blade once again. He does still have the flash, but the stun lands from the Solar Flare, and No Man's flashes and still dies. Second time in a row we've seen No Man's caught out. Yeah, so that was the unfortunate flash instead. Even if you did flash and got over, Talon would be able to parkour over the wall at the same time. So, really nicely done by DFM. And I think the vision just lagged a bit for Unicorns of Love there. Now, they are trying to attack Ebi down towards the bot here instead. But it just doesn't seem like they fancy their chances. Epi almost getting Mecha Nar as well, and it just doesn't seem like a play you want to commit for. It's a lot harder to kill a Nar about to go Mega than it is to kill an Oriano, and Epi obviously perhaps showing a little bit of his experience with this team as well. In his fourth World Championship, he knows how to play weak side. You heard Emily saying she thinks he's actually the best Japanese native player ever to have come out of the LJL, and he continues to show us even in this game where he was put behind early on he picked a good time to freeze in the top lane yes he did burn his tp but that really wasn't his fault he wasn't the one like we can play gang on that one but yeah. i mean yeah and definitely then here he, he's willing just to step back he knows he's on the weak side of the map he knows he's not going to get support so he's just like okay i'll take a step back from my tower and also now just taking a stock at the map stage you know all the vision control right now about the baron not even just around the baron but just in the map in general it just seems to favor dfm a bit Oh, we are going in. And Anasik chunked down to about half HP. There's the bullet time coming out as well. Still stepping forward. Shadow Assault has been popped. And Anasik dodges away with the safeguard. Really nice bit of interplay there between the support and the jungle of the Unicorns of Love. Grand entrance to get out. 
uh, by Santos and then the safeguard over the wall. Yeah, really nice job by Gang as well. Just coming in, not over committing, but just forcing the cleanse of Arkanod as well, which will leave him a priority target into the next game. Once again, if you have this line of vision that we already see on the map where Talon can come from behind, where the LeBlanc comes from behind, that's where you start seeing issues. But I also like the response we see from Unicorns of Love, knowing that DFM has to reset, clear out the waves. They immediately attack the camps instead. And this is how you keep a gold league going. You want to take away the enemy jungle camps because they actually give a good amount of experience of gold. And alongside that, you get deep vision into this jungle when the dragon is about to come up in 20 exactly. seconds time. DFM might decide to just forego that Drake. They say, we don't need a third. It's only a mountain. You're nowhere near Seoul anyway. We can get mid tier one from this. They don't really have the wave to push for anything further, but they will get at least the mid prio and that first tower. Yeah, and you can see DFM here. They're deciding to play two lanes instead of three just because Drake is respawning. Let's put four members while the enemy is in our jungle to try and clear the turret. Now you can push out the mid wave, which gives you more pressure moving into this one. This is actually looking pretty good for DFM if they want to contest. Unicorns of Love do have the vision advantage, but that ward in the pit is going to spot them out. Steel jumps in a little bit late. Ebi on the flank, but doesn't have the Mega Nar stacked up. DFM might decide they don't want this fight because Ebi's only halfway towards raging out. He will continue to aggro the Grump. It will reset, but he continues to build that bar up. Aria on a ward. Gang going forward. There's the Zenith Blade. Ebi still a long way away from the Mega Nar. The quickness coming out from Santos as well. The Cullen following up. Solar Flare hits onto the back line and the bullet time's going to rip through them. A great kick by Ananasik, but he's caught out with the chains. Down towards the bottom side of the fight, you can see Santos is running away. Ananasik able to escape from Aria for the moment with the safeguard. Now we move down towards the bottom lane. Still going in with the rake. Gang on the chase as well. No flash, but does have the Zenith Blade. Santos dives in with the Grand Entrance. Battle dances his way out. Steel exhausted. Shockwave goes wide. Gore drinker for the slow, but they just can't get in range. And the double up will not bounce. They're just too fast. And minion waves, they don't have the bot lane minion wave. Mid lane is still lacking a push, and therefore they can't even threaten any towers. So they get one kill, but they still lose to Drake. And Unicorns of Love gets out, gets out after that one. That they do. Gold lead overall has swung in favor of DFM for the first time in a while. About a thousand in their advantage right there. But you really feel that that fight from DFM, it felt a little tentative. It's also Unicorns of Love moving into this one. As we take a look here in the Axe replay, they can see Santos, he's actually the one stepping up to try and look for it. And I think they're being a bit too greedy with it, this one. They already got the Drake. The Insect is nice, but there's really no follow-up into it. And it's just super easy for Detonation Focus Me to still navigate this fight. The objective, or rather, a ground you get to actually just completely ignore with the talent, uh, lets you chase as well afterwards. And yeah, nicely done by Ananasik to make sure that that bullet time didn't continue, although I believe it was near the end of its ticking anyway. Unicorns of Love now will move to the top side of the map. Still down towards the bottom means that Arya is a little bit on his lonesome up here, but LeBlanc, one of the most difficult champions to lock down with that double distortion from her ultimate, of course. So Unicorns will have to settle themselves for just a little bit of jungle CS. We are getting towards more of those team fights, more of those big 5v5s, and I think across the course of watching these two teams in their home regions, both of them could be a little bit messy when it gets towards those coordinated team fights. Yeah, like what Steel is doing here, he's shadowing. Oh, that jump was a bit too far. Boss does have flash, and with the Yumus, we'll just be able to walk his yeah, way. I, I like the idea, though. He was around shadowing AB down towards the bot side because there wasn't really anything to threat. Normally, with your jungler, you don't want to have them down in the bot side when Baron is respawning. That doesn't matter when there's a talent in the game, though, as he can just skip up there immediately after. Now, man's chasing in here onto Aria. Chains go wide. Shockwave short there as well from No Man's. Hasn't always found the mark with those this game. It's been a little bit caught out by DFM. You can see Unicorns of Love after having a sizable lead has now started to switch in the opposite direction. Unipon on his way here. Again, good dodge there by Ananasik away from the chains. Steel's going to continue to parkour his way. Do a backflip, do a backflip. He's on the chase. Another one's going to come out across this wall and Steel is going to be on the flank. He's all on his wow. lonesome. But here comes TP from Ebi. DFM won this fight and they won it now. They're looking for Nomads. The kick away from Ananasik but Nomads is still chased down. DFM continue to advance. Ebi not getting the Mega Nar yet. Full of time coming out. Boss just misses with the shot blast but he's going to get chased down with the Zenith Blade and there's the Solar Flare. And here's the follow-up. Argonaut tries to flash away, but you can't flash away from Aria. DFM with three quick kills. They get completely wiped out of that one. And Steel with the parkour, with the ping ward to get his top laner into the fray as well. Super clean fight. And they are rewarded with the Baron here instead. Enemy jungler is still alive though, but no flash on the Lee Sin. And contesting this one could be suicide. And now the second Santa's looking for it. 
as you say, Lee alive, 6,000 HP left on the Baron, and Alice is going to try and safeguard in here, but I don't even know if he can get close enough in time. 3,000 HP on the Baron, and the Unicorns of Love will have to give this one up. Arya acting well as a bodyguard here, keeping Anonisic at arm's length, keeping Santos at arm's length as well, and that is the Baron over to DFM. Let's see what they do with this Red Bull Baron power play. I mean, they have third Drake coming up in just one minute as well, so there's loads of things on the map that you can secure coming into this one. And as we are diving into the replay, I like that it's all of a sudden detonation focus, me being proactive, punishing Unicorns of Love being up here. They're not respecting the mobility you get of this talent. So once he dives in behind him, gets that ward to Ebi to TP in, who beautifully dodges the grand entrance there as well. The fight is already over. Gang joins from a field. You wouldn't even expect the flying to, to come in from after the fight is done. And it's just super clean job by the event. A bit of good picks there from DFM. The whole team invested into it, running <laughs> for those kills. You can see what it means to their coaching staff as well. Unicorn. <laughs> you can see what it means to their coaching yeah. staff. I mean, it's so important because these teams are fighting for either first or second, really, in this group. If you get second place or if you get first place, you avoid playing LNG or Hanwha Life, probably. Obviously, we don't know the result of that group yet, but the expectation is it will be either LNG or Hanwha Life first, and then either Hanwha Life or LNG second. And if you can get to second place, at least in this group, you have a much easier road to make it to group stage. Yeah, I completely agree. And now, with this Red Bull Baron power play, they're pushing in the bottom side with a stack minion wave. They have Ari in the mid lane, and instead of trying to broaden the map too much, they're just combining their strength right now in members and shoving down two lanes instead of all three. And I like this because it's way easier just clearing these towers. Why make it harder for yourself when you're already in a position to just take down your opponent way easier? Yeah, and you really want to sync these waves up as well, which is something DFM aren't doing well here. Double cannon minions in the bottom lane. Aria a little bit away from the wave in the mid lane. As Unicorns of Love, five members strong, grouped up down towards this bottom side. Aria continues to push in mid. The cannon minions will go down towards the bottom. Aria does have a wave here on that mid lane. Inhibitor Tower didn't take too much damage, though. This Fortune, not the longest range AD carry, of course, does have some long range abilities, but her auto attack range pretty close and tight to her opponents. So very difficult for her to step up and really auto down that tower. Yeah, and look what they're doing right now, because they need to sink the waves again. So they're not actually attacking the minion wave. They need Aria to clear it faster. Oh. So both mid lane and bot lane minion wave collapse at, at the same time. And Unicorns of Love, they'll have issue having way too many resources down in one lane. So the going in, and Anasik jumps off to Unipon on the back line. He's going to pop the stopwatch. That's going in with quickness as well. Shadow of Soul has been popped, and already Unipon is down. And Anasik will fall as well. And Epi goes in with an arm, but the flash is away from Unicorns of Love. Arya has rejoined the fray. No man's able to escape. Santa's going back in. Gang dives forward with the Zenith blade. Santa's ticking, 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 just about survives. And DFM dived in, but Unicorns of Love were able to push them back. Just too over aggressive. You already knew five members uh, down the area. Oh, with that chain hits, that is a very dead boss. But they're still not scared. You can tell they're making mistakes, but they're not scared to make them. They are threatening the pressure that they have right now. But once again, detonation focus me. I think they just got a bit too aggressive down in this bottom side. You had Aria in the mid lane who was shoving it in. And you could have been way more patient with this one. Unicorns of Love, though, quickly punishing that mistake but they're going to need more mistakes to punish. It's the second time we've seen Ananasik finding this Super kick onto kick. Unipon. You can see Santa's very willing to follow up. Doesn't really matter if you land the grand entrance, just want to make sure that quickness comes out. Shockwave was a tiny bit early, but still enough damage to kill off a Unipon, and then the flash is away from Evie. And that's also huge because that was a lot of summoner spells you just blew for the next foreseeable fight. Yes, of course, summoner spells are still lacking as well from Detonation Focus Me, but if you're the one who's being proactive, you don't have to flash away. It's your opponents who are going to be scared instead. So now with both resets coming through, it's only two minutes left onto the real big objectives. We're having Ocean Soul on the map, and Baron is also going to be at the table at almost identical times. It's the Mountain Soul, of course, here with the mountains are coming up next, but as you say, Baron and that soul will be up at the same time. I will say, re-watching that fight down towards the bottom lane, uh, can you remember DFM's game versus Darmon Kia at MSI? I mean, it's I, I, where they, slightly. They tried to take a fight around the bot lane inhibitor, and then they lost the fight and lost the game from there. 
a few, I'm sure there's a few DFM fans out there who are having a few flashbacks to that moment with how that play went down. Don't take it away from them just yet, okay? No? The PTSD doesn't need to kick in just yet. If it does happen, though, okay, fair, I feel bad. But right now, they are still the oh, yeah, team they, they, with the lead. They definitely should win this game from this sort of position, right? They, are, they have the advantage, they're in a good spot, they have all of their items built up, and they've shown us consistently that they can find picks and they can find these fights. It's just you have that little nagging doubt when Unicorns of Love start to find some of these key picks. When Ananasik continues to find these kicks in fights, Unicorns are not down and out. They are very willing to take a fight. That's how they need to do it as well. They need to be able to create their own vision pockets because they still have the Rakan, which is, you know, one of the most slippery supports to have in the game with the movement speed that comes in from your Alter Smell. Super easy to find these flanks. And that's what you're looking for as well. You can't rely on Anasik every time. You need more members to show up as well. So Santos, I'm looking at you to try and help this Lee Sin find the pivotal target. Because if you get multiple members in a knockoff, you have the Orianna Shockwave to follow up. Rapidin's Death Cap, almost available for No Man's as well. But my big threat, on DFM right now is Arya with his items. He got the Magic Pen, he got the Ludens, and you got the Rapidons. If you get caught off guard by this guy, you're dead. 5,000, well, 4,800 gold the lead right now for DFM. Unicorns of Love fighting back in this matchup, but still very much against the ropes. DFM are looking for their first win here at Worlds 2021 would be the if they make it through to group stage, it'll be the first time the LJL has ever made it to the main stage. Unicorns of Love did it last year, of course, and struggled in their group, but still for a, a region like CIS or like the LJL, even making it to groups is a huge accomplishment. That's what they look to do. We are setting up around this dragon. Battle lines drawn. Unicorns of Love will enter from the mid lane. DFM entering from the top side near their blue buff. Still going in. Santa's going to dodge away. There's the culling onto Gang, and that's half of Leona's health. Arya dives into the back line, and look at the burst. Argonaut, less than 300 HP. He's going to eat the honey fruit to try and heal himself up. No Man's has the TP, and Unicorns of Love will try and delay this, but Arya continues dodging in, dodging out. Still unkilled in this game, still unkilled on the block in summer. DFM waiting on this dragon, not really aggroing it. Maybe waiting for Evi to build up that Mega Nar. Aria goes in onto No Man's again, and No Man's shields himself a little bit too late. The dragon resets. Evi almost Mega Nar as well. It's halfway there. She can tell they are looking as well. And Anasa goes in, but the dragon's secure. That's the Mounted Soul going over to DFM. Still looking for the back line. The bullet time rips them to shreds. And the unicorns go extinct like the mythical beast they are. Santa's forced away. No Man's trying to dodge away to the side as well, but he still has the shockwave here just in case he needs to fight this one out. Santa's and No Man's trying to do what they can. Unipon with the slow steel still chasing. DFM really want these kills so that they can get the Baron flash away from Steel. Aria going in, lands onto Santos. That's one. No Man's should be able to walk oh, this no. one out, but the TP comes in and Evie's on the Goodbye. chase. Aria will take it. DFM clean up the fight. Yeah, but it was very messy. While this happened, and Anasik, he was able to get the mid lane priority so they don't have to worry about getting pushed in at their inhibitors already. Bot lane is shoving in, but now your entire team is up towards the top side. You can threaten the Baron now, and it should go over to DFM. Unicorns of Love here with Anasik. Trying to be stealthy here. I don't think there's much he can do in this position. Gang coming around as well. He should be done. Yeah, it's the solar flare. Unipon's going to chase him down. Kick away on Anasik. Will get to the blast cone and manages to survive for the time being. But the uh, dra Baron is still being focused down by DFM. Really, they're just trying to keep this jungler away from the Baron for as long as possible. They will kill him. Splits up the death timers as well, meaning that DFM with Baron will have a man advantage for the next 41 seconds. They can even get a bigger man Argonaut. advantage if they look for this one. Oh, Argonaut. What? <laughs> oh, Arya. Undefeated on the Blanc in the LGL and currently looking to be undefeated so far at Worlds 2021. And what was the stat? You told me about his LeBlanc at the start of this game, Medic. Unkilled on the Blanc in summer and he continues to be so, so far this game. Gang flashes in, DFM looking to end this right here, right now. There goes the kill onto No Man's Boss trying to join the fray. Evie will die. Gang going in once again with the Zenith Blade. Boss pops the stopwatch, but there's a double to steal. 6-0-4. Add one more to the score. 
for DFM. The inhibitors now their target. And they have no time on Ananasic, but they do still have at least 15 seconds on Argonaut. Ananasic alone defended his base right now. Yeah, but your wave clears socks as Lee Sin. It's also bearing up minions. There's not much you can do about this situation. I think DFM, they're going to try and take it now. They were chasing An Ananasic off at the inhib. The Nexus will go down as DFM secure their first win at Worlds 2021.